Shalom. Welcome to Code Searcher. All right, guys, right down to business. I want to show you something. The past few days, and if you've been following over at uh, Facebook, um, I've been looking at a lot of things in the mainstream about war, and the other thing is uh, Planet X, 7X. And uh, so I've been in it for a couple of days, at least a week. And that table, this table, which will be another video, and this table, here, which is uh, one I want to show you real quick, because this is really profound. If you follow Gil Broussard's work, which is validated by, by these codes, by the way, here's a particular event that he points out in his research, which is um, uh, King uh, Hezekiah in Isaiah, when the time goes back on the steps. Here we have, a look at this. <clears throat> this is the word Nibiru, is the access term right there. But we also have a, co a connection of wormwood, and that's one of the things I've been looking for, is the connection of wormwood, because I absolutely believe they're connected, without a doubt. There's something that manifests in the heavens that calls what we call wormwood, the wormwood event, which is in Revelation 8. Now, the secular world, the scientific world, may call it something else. And I believe that's what this is, the mirror. But look how um, wormwood, this, which is in the blue, you got wormwood right here. But it also crosses itself on that ion right there. So it is crossing itself and pointing to the mirror. And you also have the hosophone, which is the hidden, but it also can mean the north, from the north right there. We also have in the air, which is behold, the days are coming. Look at this. Around the top. Talk about smallest skip. This is the year 2016 right here. Now here's the thing currently going on in um, Eretz Israel with the Orthodox Jews. They are torn between um, the time, what we're in, whether we're in the Shemitah still or are we in the Jubilee? So even among the, Ju the, the Orthodox, I just <clears throat> saw the same word we were just talking about right there. Sometimes these words jump out at me, folks. Zophan, same word as, that's right here, the hidden. Um, but anyway, they're not even sure of uh, the timing that we're in right now. Um, they're looking for the Mashiach, which is here, by the way. Mashiach comes up in the plain text. And the Chakav, the star, it's written backwards right here and written for the other direction here. We also got Bet Achret Yamin, which is in the end of days here. So, Hine uh, Yamin Bayim, here twice, the end of days, the Chakav. And Moed, well, uh, in the appointed times here, which is in Daniel. But um, I want you to see something really profound. This is the actual verse. The time of trauma and trouble is also here in the purple, by the way. This is the actual verse. And this is in, which is Ezekiel, excuse me, Isaiah 38, <clears throat> verse 8. Start at seven. And this shall be a sign unto thee from Yahuwah that the Adonai will do this thing that he has spoken. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of degrees, which has gone down on the sundial of Ahaz, ten degrees backward. So the sun returned ten degrees, by which degrees is gone down. The writing of Hezekiah, king of Judah, which he had been sick, 
was recovered from his illness. And that is exactly where the one of the points in its 360 something year cycle um, that it takes place. And so the Bible can be proved by a scientific theory of this planetary body which is called Nibiru or Planet 7X or Wormwood. And here we are in codes. Encoded is that very thing. Connected to Wormwood and also connected to the very day he points out. So several variables right there in just one hand. Not only that, but the year, specific year. Uh, end of days, specific time, which is there's only one end of days. Um, we've also got in here um, Marduk, uh, which was the Phoenician Babylonian, Babylonian um, deity uh, of Nibiru. So this is not some something made up by Zechariah Stitchin. However, I do believe that he may have embellished on some things to make the story more interesting, but I do believe that the, uh, the text that he got it from was, is genuine. I believe the, the Bible actually confirms it in what we call Wormwood, folks, and there's no getting around it. You can put your head in the ground and ignore it. The fact is, uh, this will take place. When I was a young, young boy, probably 12 years old, uh, you will reveal that to me, that I would live, or i live in the days that this would take place. So it's always been a fascination with me, and it's one of the things I've looked up and focused on with the codes, one of the original things that I wanted to search out. I also want to point um, this particular verse, which is uh, out of Daniel, and it goes to uh, particular time. So here we are. Um, another variable that um, points to a particular time that we're in, a season that we're in. And this is out of chapter 12. And are, some of you already know where we're going with this. This is exactly where uh, the Bible codes, the Torah codes, is encoded. Where it says here in verse 1, I'll start here. And at that time, Michael shall stand up. The great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, which is in here. It's in covenant as well, which is another variable. Such as never since was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. Every one shall be found written in the book. Now, listen to me on this. There's what's called the book of life. And I do believe it's connected to the Bible. And do believe that everyone's encoded there that is sealed by him. And here it is being pointed out in a very chapter dealing with the end of times. And Daniel is a highly encoded book. And here's where it says, Everyone that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. But they that be wise shall shine as brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many into righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But thou, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of end, which is where you are now. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. And if you didn't know, we came out of the dark ages pretty much about 150 years ago, folks. So when we're talking about the time of Daniel, we're not just talking about the last 20 years, the last 40 years, the last 50 years. We're actually talking about roughly the last 190 years since the dawn of what was called the Industrial Revolution. Okay? We went from horse and buggy to can and candles and um, Pony Express to uh, trains and... Um, telegraph and the automobile and the telephone and going to going to the moon and uh, 
uh, flight and things like that. So just imagine there's an explosion of knowledge. A man is running to and fro. Then I, Daniel, looked and out of a hole and there stood two, one on the other side of the big, um, bank of the river and the only side of that bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, if you want to know folks who that is, that is Ezekiel. He has also pointed out, excuse me, Enoch in Ezekiel. It's also pointed out in the man in white with an inkhorn by his side. That is Ezekiel. I mean, I'll say it again. It's kind of blade here, folks, and I've been looking at this many, 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 many hours. Enoch, written in the book of Ezekiel, mentioned in the book of Ezekiel, as a man in linen. He's not specified as the son of man or an angel, but a man clothed in white with an inkhorn at his side. That is Enoch, the great scribe. It's being mentioned here again when Daniel saw him. And he asked him, How long shall it be until the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, as he held up his right hand and his left hand into heaven. And he swore by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for times, a times, and a half. And he shall be a half accomplished to scatter the power of, thy, of the holy people, and all these things be finished. And that is a highly encrypted couple of verses right there, folks. And I've been searching it a lot because I believe it has the answer of when that is. And I know you say, well, Yeshua said, no man knows the day or the hour. <sighs> he was speaking in an idiom at that point, folks. If you think about it, Matthew 24, he talks about the end of days in parables and idioms and in that one verse he is literal come on folks he's speaking in a Jewish idiom and it's full of these in, in, in the codes in the Bible so you have to think that way <clears throat> okay and I heard but I understood not then I said, Oh my Adonai, what shall be the end of all these things? I love this book. And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and are sealed until the end. They're sealed until the end. Now how are they unsealed? Is it just all of a sudden one day, it, it just all of our Bibles have become unsealed? Folks, I propose to you that the, the codes, the Torah codes, the Bible codes, and I mean the real ones, not those that are being uh, mimicked. And it's not about who's being called. I think it's evident who is being called to do this. And you saw here at this channel, it was this channel and Rabbi Glazer something that confirmed that the Torah codes, the Bible codes, is connected to the ephod. But it is the codes that play a part of unsealing these books. Now listen to this, because this is where my name is, is in this part of the Daniel, uh, which has me strongly connected to the codes. And it says this, Go thy way, Daniel, for these words are closed and sealed until the end of time, time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from time of that daily of the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that make desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh on the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. But go thou, uh, thou, excuse me, but go thou thy way until the end be, for thou shalt rest, 
and stand in thy lot at the end of days. <clears throat> that's powerful, folks, because that's where we are now. And man is running to and fro, and it's just as Yeshua said, um, as the days of Noah, where people are giving in to marriage and their mortgage and their um, what the test or monastery, how do you say it? Monastery schools for monastery. children. Yeah. Um, all those things that were or are important to us in everyday life doesn't seem to pale in comparison to eternity. To me. Yeah, I miss my kids. Dearly. And it's one of those things that this ministry has cost me. My marriage. A lot of things. But it pales in comparison to eternity. And that's why I do this. And I share this with you. I don't spend all these hours looking at this and my eyes you know, killing me because of the uh, computer screen burning. It's because I genuinely believe that we're living in these days with everything in my being. And I do believe, based on what I see and the evidence around me, that governments of this world know that there's something coming. The scripture says that men's heart failed them for things coming upon the earth. And I'm seeing firsthand, and I'm going to hopefully do an expose on it. Something I've seen less than an hour from here, which is an underground city in the mountains, with, uh, complete with uh, solar and wind turbines. Um, the leaves are preparing for something. And it's right there in your scripture. And I'm showing you in confirmation in the codes. Real confirmation. I'm not talking about cookie cutter stuff. Real. And it's a heavy heart. There's another table I need to do, folks. And this is just one. I found another on uh, the bureau. Here. The start of the bureau. And it's just... I'm just starting, but I did find the story of Jonah, which is another place um, Gil points out is a contact point of Planet 7X. So we'll be working on this one. But also, I need to go ahead and do uh, this one, which is the Babylon Rising. Now, I pulled a lot of information out of this <clears throat> already. Same verse, same verse that we were just looking at. Um, in Isaiah, where time has stopped and changed, is right here with Nibiru running through it. You see right there in the green. But we also have words like annihilation and judgment and the, the economy and Tura war or shout the war. War is here a few times. Um, some, some heavy things. Now, Nibiru appears vertically in this. Very small scale. We're under 5,000 in this with Wormwood in close proximity to that. So we're gonna get into this. This is, now look, all the, look at all these verses. And you know who has decided to encode all of this with all of these verses that pertain to the end. Even right here, look at this. Uh, Yom Yahuwah, the day of Yahuwah, uh, with the word in a very small skip pattern right here, connected to the hay in Yom Yahuwah is annihilation. It comes in Joel. So, uh, whether you want to believe it or not, it's coming on us. These things are coming on us. And there's something in the government right now that's called plausible deniability. Which is they're going to try to hide these things until they absolutely cannot hide them no more. And they're going to deny it. And things are going to go on. But you will see ripples of what's coming in the markets. Like, for instance, uh, Stan Dale pointed out how all of commerce and shipping stopped and all the ships were in port. 
And then you can see, like we were looking at reports of the, the price of goods in Canada. Uh, one place where a gallon of milk was $16 a gallon. Okay, <clears throat> here's some advice. And listen, this is a tragic thing with the, with the body. Because everyone is looking for a rapture around verse chapter 4 in Revelation. So they don't want to talk about chapter 8. Well, we're not going to be here for that. We're not going to be here for any of the bad stuff. Folks, I would recommend that you have a plan. Always hope for the best, but plan for the worst. Have water on hand. Not only that, have a, uh, you know, if, if you're one family, have another family that you're collaborating with and have a plan as, as a group. And from there, you know, as a group, plan to collaborate with other groups and have a plan. Because there's going to come a day in this country where whether it's cataclysm or it's war, they're going to try to round you up. And you don't want to be in a large city when commerce stops, when chaos ensues, and when the military comes out to enforce martial law. Then you're stuck. So I would suggest that you have a plan. Always have a plan. And never wait too late. If something goes down, um, you got about three days to react and react quickly and get to where you're going. Because gasoline is going to dry up quickly. The shelves of stores will go bare quickly within three days. So, there you go. That's what I have for you. On, I'm going to wrap it up on this particular video. So I've rambled on enough. Uh, join us, folks, on Saturday nights, 7 p.m. Mountains time. Um, we'll be doing live broadcasts here on YouTube. And uh, we're going to be finishing out the book, Bible Code Bombshell, and then moving to other teachings like uh, the name. And uh, this observing the Sabbath and things like that. Uh, just some nuggets that I've discovered over the past few months. So, shalom. And, and thank you to those that support this ministry. I can't, I can't keep going without you guys. And uh, thank you. Who is blessing over you? So, shalom. See you in the next video.